If you enjoy spicy food, you're gonna be enjoying today's Spicy Nation. That's right, we're playing as Bengal boys, situated in the northeast parts of the Italian peninsula. Bengal features a variety of abilities that might just make it into a super nation if you know what I mean. I'm talking about their insane national ideas that include infantry combat ability and manpower as well as artillery damage from back row. I cannot overstate how important this modifier is in the mid to late game. But not only that, he also gets trade efficiency, army tradition, dev cost reduction as well as idea cost and even good produce modifier so both from an economic as well as a military perspective Bengal is insanely strong add to that the fact that they have one of the most uh, spicy mission trees around that not only gives out claims but despite having been added a while back to EU4 this mission tree has a ton of different modifiers and uh, bonuses like the ability to change your country to an empire after you enact the tiger triumphant friendly movement speed plus 25 until the end of the game for a particular line in the northern part of India as well as permanent modifiers all around the place like the dev cost reduction minus 10% in the Delta the Bengal Delta and speaking of the Delta as you can see here almost all of our provinces are either grasslands or farmlands and we start with a pretty strong army as well plus we have five different estates including the Rashputs, which means we can start establishing the Rashput regiments, unique special units that are significantly stronger than your regular units, and we even have access to the Jains with their magnificent dev cost reduction and so on. Let's start this off by uh, summoning the diet and uh, going for whichever agenda best suits us. Making Tierhood a vassal seems like the easiest of all these options here. Remember, you also start with a core on your neighbor of Orisa, and Orisa is definitely going to be our first target because we need to conquer all of Arisa in order to get our mission done that gives claims on the rest of the Northeast Indian parts and whilst we're doing that we're gonna be getting more claims on the east of us into the Indo-Chinese Peninsula as well as we'll try to be snaking into the Tibetan lands. We're also a Muslim nation so we have these special Muslim interactions and the core creation cost reduction is really gonna help us out in the first few years since we will be expanding like crazy. That's that's the great part about uh, Bengal. They can both play tall and they can expand like crazy. Whatever you want to do with them, you can do it without any complications. We're also going to be giving the Brahmin legacy to rule since we do have issues with our starting religious unity. Pretty much all of our country is uh, Hindu and we are a Sunni nation so we need to start converting these mofos here. And of course, we will be giving out the plus one mana privilege for all three of our states. Looks like we can actually ally Jaunpur. I don't mind giving them a, a sweet old alliance. Beginning part of this campaign, at least, I want to have my uh, western side covered. And after I finish killing off all of these countries that I'm highlighting right now, I will start moving into Jaunpur. Betray my ally and make them Bengali once more. Not as if they ever were Bengali, but you know, you got no proof that they weren't, all right? Jane's I am forever indebted to you boyos. This money is gonna come in handy in my war against Orisa because I will be using it to recruit the Grand Company in uh, Madia or Nadia. And let's make our leader a Generalus. For maneuver, he's got all the right pips in the wrong places. <laughs> I wish he had four siege. I'm happy he has uh, one siege. That's better than nothing. And it's the 11th of December, so that means we can start our war. And so, we shall go to war. They ally Tripura, so I'm gonna be using my Grand Company to kill off Tripura's armies in that case. You know what? I'm gonna get a second general too for that. Wait, Tripura's got zero soldiers? What? They don't start with units or do they just delete their units? That's weird. In any case, I'm gonna have to be careful not to have my main army killed off. It's a lot easier stack wiping now with the recent update. That's why I'm also sending off my grand company to Tripura where they don't really have to fight anybody. Otherwise, because they have low morale, they might get themselves stack wiped if I'm not careful enough. Oh nine, the Raja of Burshut. Oh no, no, no. Uh, for real, am I actually gonna get 14 peasant regiments in the 
uh, Bengal Delta now. That's one of my most prestigious areas, boys. I don't want to get devastation in those lands. I'm going to try to hold on to this event as much as I can. That's going to give me an extra two, three months in which I can probably siege down Tripura and use this army to uh, get rid of the uh, rebels afterwards. Alrighty, Tripurski. Time to say goodbye, Yos, which is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a slang in uh, Bengal, totally an Indian language. Liar! Yeah, uh, I'm gonna wait before I attack these guys. I need to first take the city. My grand company is definitely not gonna be enough to kill 14,000 units. And we might as well incorporate Tripura whilst we're at this. Let's make him a full Corius. Oh, wait, this is a part of our state. So we got the entire state of Tripura now. We're also getting claims on these guys in Kachar, and we're gonna get the same in Manipur. Basically, these areas are not really any sort of a concern AE-wise because they're different religions and they're also a different color. Culture. So me annexing all of this is not gonna piss off the rest of the Indian parts So I can literally take most of Northeast India and not get any sort of a coalition Are you sure about that? 469 days totally not a massive amount of time and I'm totally not salty because it took that long I promise boys. All right, these guys are gonna try and take it back That means we would have defender advantage when we attack them here now and that is exactly why we kicked their butts Remember this is also not only a fort, but it is hills. So we are getting a minus one dice roll for the attacker and even though it's their province because we occupied it we are the defender so they're the attacker and the ones that are getting that minus one dice roll we're also going to be chasing them down so we don't give them time to uh, recover their morale this way we can stack wipe them and afterwards just carpet siege the rest of their country and after quite a few times of uh, chasing them around we did eventually stack and vapenic room them which means we now have free reign over carpet sieging everything here hey we have the madrasa a play Place where learning and studying is done it can give us prestige and tech cost reduction for 20 years or tax or we can just not do anything we're gonna go for the tech cost reduction even though it's 74 ducats which is quite a lot it's still super worth it since it's gonna allow us to very easily get technology take note whenever a country that you're attacking is getting its ass kicked most likely what's gonna happen other countries are gonna try and take advantage and that's what happened here Orisa got attacked by Andra and Andra is not gonna get nothing because because I have units occupying everything and I am the leader of these sieges even though I'm not able to siege down stuff I'm still leading the siege which means it's gonna be long to me after the siege is over and Daria go boys 100% war score <laughs> That means we can fully annex Orisa now. And if we do fully annex Orisa, it also means that all of their vassals become my vassals. However, I actually don't really want these nations as my vassals. It will increase my land force limit because I will have four vassals. But it also is three development vassals. It's kind of like a waste of my diplo slots. So, um, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm going to leave two of their vassals alive because I am going to be able to use their claims. And two vassals means I can also get the strong duchy's uh, privilege from the estates that gives me two extra diplo relations 70 aggressive expansion means that most of these uh, smaller nations next to me are gonna be uh joining that coalition gonna be constant ratio as well in these lands and this is the map that tells me which nation is gonna join in a coalition we're gonna do this mission too with the conquest of kutak i get claims on these particular nations that would join in a coalition against me and i'm gonna use my claims to quickly get rid of them based on on the alliance sets i'm gonna be attacking uh the weakest of them first and then work my way from there it does seem like patna is the easiest of these countries so i'm gonna attack i'm gonna koblajay chanda because i will also be annexing chanda and uh, let's go number one ski war number two ski following up shortly we can also do this muslim interaction so we can debase our currency and then we can lower the corruption by two which means we basically got free money and we can repeat this as many times as we want well there is a time where we gotta wait i guess not as many times as we want ah i love the wait wait hold on a second is that the flag of gondor in ratanpur where was gondor when ratanpur fell that looks exactly like the tree of gondor okay just you know it's black and that's a, with the yellow background holy mo is this where gondor originally came from it's not numenorians is it it was ratanpurians all along hey we have fertile rains in uh, andra that's cool so uh, anyway the siege of chanda is done that is a little bit of a problem though because we do not border them yet and for me to be able to annex chanda also i would have to attack jankand before 
which in turn means I have to attack these guys before and it's and so on it's it's, it's complicated right it's very complicated and for that exact reason I'm not gonna be annexing Chandra instead I'm gonna make them a vassal because I don't border them and because I still want to own this land one way or another before the Bengalis do. And by Bengalis, I mean the Bahmanis. We're the Bengalis. <laughs> Ludi, you're so confused, bro. So I am confusion. All right, we also got Gunpowder Warfare because we have Military Tech 4. We're the first ones to get Military Tech 4. And uh, that gave us a lot of claims all around us, especially on the uh, ally here of Jaunpur. But we will declare one more war before anything else. And that's going to be on these boys together with the Kush and Assam. All three of these nations we want to take out right now the sooner the better because the northeastern parts are uh, actually surrounded by mountains and they make really great defensible locations after we have these areas here we don't need to stress about somebody uh, trying to attack us from the east we can just build a couple of fortifications and we have all the defenses we need whilst we focus on unifying the main areas of india oh no we just the Liechtenstein their army oh that is not gluten for them is it boys i'm not I'm not gonna pretend that these wars are difficult or anything of the sorts. I am basically three times the size of these small nations that I'm attacking here. And I just realized Sadia sounds a little bit like Wadia. Isn't that the nation from The Dictator? That kind of makes me want to watch The Dictator again. Sasha Baron Cohen is one of my favorite actors and comedians. <laughs> You know what? From now on, I'm always going to be calling this country Wadia instead of Sadia. <laughs> I'm going to be getting my spy network on Wadia since I will be attacking them after I finish with a Sam. I come before you today to tell you that Ludi. you shall kneel before our great nation. Actually, I don't think it's pronounced Assam. I think it's pronounced Assam, maybe? I might be wrong, but I think it's Assam. Can my Indian people or Bengali people in the chat confirm? Oh, dude, for real? Wadia just attacked the nation that I was attacking, which means I'm probably not going to be able to take this province now, and I'm going to have to wait for them to peace out, and apparently Manipur also attacked them. So yeah, everyone's trying to take advantage of stuff here, apparently. Not cool, boys, not cool. Let me attack Manipur in that case also. I need a diplomat. All right, let's bring this boyo back. We will teach Manipur ein Lesonski. From now on, you will be known as Manicure. Was that a good Wadian accent? What do you guys think? Aladdin or was it Aladdin? It was probably Aladdin to be fair. All right, let's start uh, Aladdining these areas. <laughs> I need to stop. Stop it. Stop making the Aladdin jokes. This needs to stop now. With the conquest of Kosh, Kosh. It's totally not another word, guys. We got more claims on uh, the areas that we're conquering now, as well as uh, Wadia. We got the claim, the permanent claim on Wadia, boys. So because I've been mainly killing off uh, Hindu countries, there are some countries that are still Hindu around, which have joined in a coalition, including Mewar. So pretty much all the Hindu countries now in uh, the Indian subcontinent hate my guts, but that's fine because they're not going to be around for too much longer. Just like Wadia is not going to be around for too much longer. The cool part about attacking uh, Aladdin's nation is that Bishnupur, which is in that coalition, was allied to uh, Wadia, so we can um, we can kill him off now without having to worry about fighting the entire coalition for this one OPM. When you really think about it, this is not actually that many countries in this coalition, is it? Because we just got rid of two more of them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> boy. Look how big our name is on the map. I think we literally doubled in size in just the first seven years. Oh, I'm loving this game already, man. I love Bengal. It's like, honestly, one of my favorite hidden nations because not many people know how strong this nation is. Let's go with the conquest of Assam. <laughs> Next step, obviously, is to consolidate all the provinces we took and to wait for our manpower to go back up a little bit before we do the next expansion spree, which will likely include most of the uh, Nepali areas of uh, Tibet, as well as we'll be expanding into the east. Since we have to wait for the Hindu nations to leave the coalition, to help with that, though, I'm going to be getting some extra alliances. So I'm going to be getting the easy alliances and the alliances that would actually be helpful, like Malwa. I probably cannot get Delhi also because I've allied 
two of their rivals. In fact, all three of these nations have rivaled each other, and I managed to ally two of them, but they're not going to be uh, sticking around with me for too much longer, so I have to um, break the alliance with uh, John Poor at some point in the nearby future. I also have to delete the Grand Company since they don't have any more manpower available, and I'm going to be replacing them with the Free Company, which has 8,000 units, fresh units for that matter now. And guess what, boys? We just managed to get Indian Arquebusiers, which means we have Fire Pip units. Since the Indian Arquebusiers give you one fire at Military Tech 5, which is pretty insane, most tech groups get this at around Tech 9 or 12. So having it from Tech 5 is a massive deal. That also means that we're going to be crushing anybody that we're going to attack now. And I have my eyes set on Bahmanis with the quick war to take the eastern parts of Bahmanis. Not all of it, just a little bit. We're munching into them for the time being. And we're also doing it because we want to take their money mainly. As always, don't forget to lower the autonomy everywhere, especially after your conquest, because it will significantly improve your economy and your manpower afterwards. Whenever you start integrating your vassals, in order to not get the minus three Diplo reputation hit, you want to give out the Amir's integration policy. In fact, you want to give this out as soon as you start integrating because it makes it 5% faster for you to integrate your vassals also. I'm also manually spawning in the rebels so I can kill these guys now whilst I'm at peace. This way when I start the war against Bahmanis, I don't need to worry about my rebellions popping off and my rebels destroying my country. So there you go. Next up we're going to Damin which means we can spawn in the Jarkandians and that's going to be the last group afterwards we can do the war with Bahmanis. Luckily for me Bahmanis are at war with Vagina Gar. That happens a lot of times by the way. And we can even call in Malwa to our help as well as Gujarat. If you do this be careful because they will likely want to take lands from Bahmanis. So make sure you're the first one to siege the lands that you're interested in before these other nations do. Despite the fact that they're basically attacked by everybody around them, Bahmanis still managed to destroy Vagina Gar and we got the fall of Vagina Gar event here as well as Bahmanis double their land size here I guess. I don't know man it looks pretty pretty strong to me but it's not because we're crushing them okay. They're not as strong as they look. When it comes to the tier 2 reform it's a little bit different from most nations because Bengal does have the strengthened Bengali traders that offers them one extra merchant as well as trade efficiency. I highly recommend you go for this. The extra merchant is really going to help you out especially since when it comes to trade Bengal has the potential to be a massively overpowered trade nation which will help with our economy so much and with obviously everything else as consequence since the more money we have the easier expansion is going to be. Even though I don't actually need to kill off Bahmani's army I'm doing it because I'm getting extra army tradition from that and uh, in this game at least uh, army tradition is king boys. The better your army tradition the better your armies are going to be. I feel like I'm ready to make my peace deal. One thing you need to take into account whenever you do your peace deal is not only to see what nations are in a coalition against you because I know that's very obvious right but also to see what cores you could potentially release from the provinces that you take. So what I mean by this is that look at this boys. I can release two nations namely Bijapur from the province of Raichur and I can also release Ahmed Nagar from the province of Paite and with these two nations I can feed them pretty much all of Bahmanis afterwards. Look at this. Bijapur has so many freaking cores and most of these are actually high development and the same goes for Ahmed Nagar. All of the northern bits and all of the central part I can get from Bahmanis without having to core it myself because these are cores of my vassals. And it's the same for pretty much most of the big nations in India. Vijayanagar has uh, that similar situation with cores of Madurai and uh, Mysore and basically everybody else has some sort of nation that you can release with one province feedback afterwards. So just keep an eye out for that whenever you're playing in India in general not just as Bengal. And this is especially important when you're attacking nations that are your religion or the same culture group as you or the same culture group as other nations around that would join in a coalition for that matter. So because Bahmanis is still a Muslim nation even though it's not Sunni it's still a Muslim nation I am gonna get more aggressive expansion with other Shia nations around as well as with other nations of their particular culture I think they're Maratha am I wrong about that yeah um, no, I don't know. Oh, no, I'm wrong. They're actually Canada. So I'm getting more aggressive expansion with other Canada and Telugu as well as Tamil nations, which basically means uh, Andhra and Vijayanagar. Oh, wow. So they're basically in the same culture group, Bahmani. 
Chinese and Vagina Gar, but they're just a different religion. That's like a family feud right there, isn't it? And check this out, boys. Building a church in Gauda gives 0.39 ducats flat. That is a huge amount. Definitely worth building them. A marketplace in Chittagong gives 13 trade power, which is a huge amount, guys. It means this one province is gonna give 50 trade power by itself. We're applying the same deal we did with the Bahamanis when it comes to Vagina Gar, taking two provinces so we can release from there two more vassals with lots of cores. And this time it's less nations in a coalition because most Hindu nations have been killed either by me or by my allies like Gujarat over here. And now we're gonna be releasing Madurai, which has pretty much most of South uh, India, as well as Mysore, which has the rest of the Vagina Gar lands here in the north. I also took the one province in Jaffa or Vanai so I can access Kote, which is the only Buddhist nation in the mainland in the Indian subcontinent. Well, technically it's on an island, so I guess it's not in the subcontinent itself. But because these guys are Buddhists, me annexing these boyos here is not going to piss anybody off and they don't even have any allies. So it really is just a really, really fast conquest of the Sri Lankan island or Ceylon. And since Andhra is now a super easy target, I'm going to be killing him off. So I basically have the entirety of the east coast of India. Ignore the fact that we don't have the actual tip. That's that's not really India, okay? Gonna need more mercs though, so let's go ahead and hire the Mamluks of Delhi. No, I'm not gonna do that. They're too expensive. I'm gonna go for the Grand Company instead. Way cheaper. I'm not able to get military access to reach Calicut, but I'm gonna use my units to do a naval landing over there. Let's go ahead and use our ships. The mightiest of all Bengali fleets in the history of Bengal. It's gonna do the uh, D-Day of Calicut. I hate the fact that they already gave me unconditional surrender because now if I don't piece them out instantly I get a lot of war exhaustion and I cannot piece them out because I need to take the city of Calicut before I do piece them out so I am gonna take that war exhaustion. I feel like this is a mechanic that pretty much just punishes expansionist players let's say and Calicut's gone. I will be fully annexing them. Let's uh, kill off their fleet. I guess that should be fine now. Yep. Badozi 149126 Arrivederci Kalikutus and for that matter Arrivederci and you know, Andra actually has so many cores. In an alternate uh, game, you could potentially vassalize Andra and use them to feed back the northern parts of Vaginagar, which we're not doing today because we don't need to. But just saying, in the future, you never know whatever games some people might have would be of Zahelpsky. Oh my god, I'm so close to getting 100 overextension already. <laughs> we totally are playing tall, guys. I mean, look how tall we are, right? Is this what they actually mean by playing toll? It has to be. Come on, it has to be. This is one of the weirdest Timurids I've ever seen. I mean, they clearly lost the civil war or, well, the independence war against Afghanistan, Transoxiana, but they also did expand <laughs> and they still managed to hold on to the uh, province of Bamiyan, which has the uh, Buddha statues that in real life got destroyed, sadly. Well, there's remains of them around there, but still sad that these Bamiyan statues did get destroyed. Also, also, Sindh decided to completely kill off Balochistan, which is good because Sindh is my ally. But the most shocking of things is the fact that Ethiopia is now a one province minor <laughs> in the province of Gondor. Uh, sorry, Gondor. Oh boy. That's a lot of cores that Ethiopia has. That's a lot of cores. Okay. You know what? I, I'm suddenly getting the urge of... Uh, establishing a colonial empire in these lands with the, you know, a small little Ethiopian Vasalski. I'm gonna be also renaming Sri Lanka to uh, Sri Bengal. I think that's a little bit more fitting. From now on, it shall be known as Sri Bengal. Wait, the states are South Lanka and North Lanka. Wait a second, so does that mean that the island is Lanka and Sri is something like Unified Lanka or something like Did I just decipher a language without ever hearing this language before? Oh my god, I am such big brain. Also, if it does not actually mean Unified Lanka, well, just whatever, okay? You don't know either, do you? Truce is over with the Bahmani, so let's get our cores for our beloved uh, vassals. Let's set Bijapur as the target, and we're not calling in any allies. We don't need anyone for this war. So the scumbag Gujarati actually took provinces from Bahmani 
he's cucking me over in the process because some of these actually belong to my vassals. So, uh, yeah. I am very disappointed with Gujarath and as consequence, I will make sure they don't exist for much longer. Now, this just looks glorious, guys. 17 aggressive expansion for basically taking half of uh, Bahmanis and with the next war, we're gonna fully annex the rest since they have less than 100 war score now, I believe. Oh, no, I'm wrong. They have 131%, so I guess it's two wars more unless somebody else next to them decides to attack them also. I think the main issue that we have uh, to deal with as Bengal is probably just the rebels. I keep getting rebels every five seconds, essentially. My uh, mercenary companies are going up and down this tall nation to kill off rebels in Nawadia, then to kill off rebels in uh, Sri Lanka, or better yet, Sri Bengal. Stop it. Get some help. But still, it's a very fun process and I'm really enjoying the playthrough. If you enjoyed the video, you're gonna absolutely love this Muscovy video up next. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else would like to also support me, you will find the links in the description.